Hello, welcome to another Scratch tutorial. This one is to called tutorial number four, Candy Ghost. This tutorial will deal with more sensing blocks as well as introduce the concept of a broadcast and a variable. Let's begin by naming our project called tutorial four, Candy Ghost. All right. Uh, first thing we can do is let's get rid of Scratchy. We don't need him. Come down to this. And now let's bring in the this, this sprite that we are going to use. So I am going to click on choose a sprite, go to search, wait till it populates, and then I can just type in what I'm looking for. So I'm looking for a ghost. So I started typing ghost. There it is right there. I'm going to click on him. I'm going to go into the ghost's costume. And notice there's four of them. We don't want all four. We're only going to take the last one. So I'll delete the first one. Delete all the first three until we get to this one. We'll keep this one. Let's check and see if there are any sounds associated with it. I'm going to get rid of that as well. And so now we just have our ghost. Um, and for the name, uh, I guess we'll keep it as that for now. We'll change it a little later. Okay. So let's introduce a background that we're going to use. We'll go over to stage, click on choose a backdrop. I'm going to just type in woods and I'm going to choose this creepy looking background right here. Uh, I'm going to go back into I'm going to click on backdrops. I'm going to go back into backdrops right here. And then I'm going to get rid of the default white one. Don't need it. And I'm going to see if there's any sounds associated with this. Um, there's a pop. Uh, I'm actually going to keep that. All right. So back to our sprite. And we are ready to start coding. So let's uh, start off with going down to control. Oops, sorry, events. Let's bring out a hat. Starting a new thread when green flag is clicked. Then we can come down to control. Let's bring out a forever block, our loop. Snap that in there. And let's bring out an if statement, a conditional. And we're going to form an argument using that. So to do that, we need to come to sensing, sensing blocks. And let's find the block that says distance to mouse pointer. Bring that out. Put that right there. Don't snap it in yet. Then we'll go to operators. And we're going to find a greater than symbol, which is this one where little arrow is pointing to the right. OK, so let's formulate what's called an argument. So with this conditional, so if remember if, in the conditional, if something happens, then something else happens. So right now we're setting up the first thing. So if this happens, so if the distance to the mouse pointer, so we're going to snap this up into the left side of this green block. If the distance to the mouse pointer is greater than, and we'll put a 10 in there, greater than 10, all right, so let's go ahead and snap this green block right into the operator. Let's put it right into the statement. So if the distance of the mouse pointer is greater than, then we want something to happen. So if this, if this occurs, we want this to happen. So let's go up to motion. Let's find point towards mouse pointer. And then let's find move certain amount of steps. And let's change this to three. Now we can put the point towards and the move inside the if statement. So what it's saying is if the distance to the mouse pointer is greater than 10, then do this point towards the mouse pointer and then move three steps. So now we can snap this into the forever block. So now when we hit the green flag, What's going to happen is it'll start a loop, so it'll do it over and over until we tell it not to. What will it do over and over? Form this argument. If the distance to the mouse pointer is greater than 10, it'll point towards the mouse pointer and then move three steps. So let's watch what happens. 
Okay, so our ghost is moving towards the mouse pointer at all times. And this reminds me something I forgot to do with the, the, the ghost. Um, let's come down to direction, click on this area, and then see the two arrows, left, right, I'm gonna click on that. I only want our ghost pointing left and right, otherwise he looks kind of silly. So watch the difference. He doesn't do that thing where he just flips all around. Next, we are going to go ahead and bring in our next sprite. Actually, we're going to create a sprite this time. So let's go down to the bottom right where it says choose a sprite. And this time, let's go to the paintbrush, click on paint. And this brings us to the area where we can create a sprite. So here's where we're going to create our candy. So what I'd like to do first is to uh, select over here the circle tool and let's choose a color for it. So uh, let's make our color blue for this. Bluish anyway. There we go. Uh, let's select outline. Let's do no outline. And for thickness, let's do three. I guess it doesn't matter if we don't have an outline for this one, but it'll come up next. All right, so then what we do is we draw out our piece of candy, and that's a good size right there, but if it wasn't, we could uh, make it bigger or smaller by dragging the edge. Now it's kind of small. To make it look a little bigger, we can just magnify it. This It doesn't make it bigger, it just makes what we see bigger. So this will be the piece of candy. Next, I'm actually going to make it a lollipop. So next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a line. So I'm going to come over to the line tool. And for this one, I'm going to say, I'll put that one at three. And we'll make sure that for this one, the outline is white. So I'm going to drag this over, actually drag that over there and drag that over there. So just play with it till you get white. And then I'm just going to draw in like a little stick for the lollipop, like so. Uh, next, I'm gonna go back to the circle tool and I'm gonna draw out a, I'm gonna say, uh, I'm gonna say no fill on this. And I'm just gonna draw a little circle inside to make sure, make it looks like I'm giving it a little, uh, a little texture, like so. Okay, and there is our lollipop. Next, I'm going to rename this sprite. I'll call it Candy Blue. And I'm going to go to its direction over here. And I'm going to tell it to just look left and right. Next, let's go and let's give this piece of candy some code. First, I'm going to drag out a control. Whoops, sorry, an event. One green flag is clicked, then a control. Forever. So next, let's go up to uh, the motion palette, <clears throat> motion block on our palette, and let's drag out a move block. Let's drag out a turn right to certain degrees block. And let's drag out uh, an if on edge bounce block. Uh, in addition to that, let's go to operators and let's drag out a pick random block. Okay, so what this is gonna do is when we click the green flag, it's gonna start the loop. We're gonna ask our ghost to move two steps. Actually, this is not our ghost. This is our, uh, our lollipop. So we're asking our lollipop to move two steps. We're asking it to turn so it doesn't do the same thing over and over. We're going to put in uh, some randomness. So I'm going to put negative 20, 20. And I'm going to snap that right in where it says turn right 
a certain number of degrees. So it's now turn right, pick random negative 20 to 20 degrees if on edge bounce. And I'm going to go ahead and snap this whole thing into my loop. And now watch when I play it, the lollipop is movement is going to seem more random. It's just going to kind of float around. It's on the edge, it bounces, and so on. So what I've got now at this point, I've got our ghost chasing the mouse and the lollipop just doing its own thing. So we're going to add some more code to continue on with our game.